In the last video, I show you how you can create a simple Ethereum DApp using Vue, Drizzle, and the Vue Drizzle plugin. We use Vue component provided by the Drizzle Vue plugin, like Drizzle Account or Drizzle Contract and Drizzle Contract From. In this video, we are going to refactor this DApp, but this time we're going to use our own custom Vue component. We're not going to use the component provided by the Vue plugin. The big advantage of doing this is flexibility. By creating your own components, you fully control how you want to display the data coming from your smart contract. By the way, this video is sponsored by Edoblox Pro, my screencast for Ethereum DApp and Solidity smart contract developer. If you want to unlock access to the source code to all the tutorials of Edoblox, go to the website of Edoblox Pro and click on Enroll Now to create a free account. So first I'm going to go to my terminal and I'm going to copy over some boilerplate code so that we don't start from scratch. I'm going to copy the code from the git repo of Edoblox Pro in the screencast series episode 13 subfolder start. All right, so let's go in the start folder and this is exactly the same shuffle project as for the last video. So we have this simple storage smart contract that can store an integer and change its value and we're going to build the front end for this. So the front end is inside the VAP directory. Let me clear my screen. And just before we start the front end code, I need to quickly tell you about a mistake I've made in the last video. So basically, in the last video, I told you that in the package.json, we need to install Drizzle. But actually, the Drizzle view plugin already takes care of this. So this Drizzle dependency here is redundant. You can get rid of it and it will still work. All right, so that was just detail. So now let's go to the SRC folder where we have all our front-end code and let's open the app.view component. So we have three components to implement. First, we need a component to show the current account with the current balance. Then we need a component to show the current value of the store data variable inside our spot contract. And finally, we need a last component to call the set function of the smart contract that will change the value of the store data variable. So we're going to start with the easiest, which is the account component. So in the same directory as the app component, we're going to create another file called account.view. And this will have two sections. So first the template where we define our HTML. And after the script where we define our JavaScript. And we're going to need to read the Vuex dot provided by the Drizzle View plugin. For this, we need the map getters function from Vuex. So let's import this from Vuex. Then we need to export an object that describes our component. So let's do this just below export default. And first, we need to give a name to our component. So we're going to call it account. And after, we're going to define a computer key so that we can import value from the Vuex store. And inside this object, we're going to use the map getters function from Vuex as well as the spread operator. So this is a very standard in Vuex. And first, we need to give the namespace of the Vuex store that we want to use. So that's the account namespace. And after, we're going to give an array with all the properties that we're interested in. So we want active account and we want active balance. So for example, if currently in MetaMask, you have selected the second account. So in active account here, you will see the address of this account and in active balance, then you will see the balance of this account in way. All right, and let's close the parentheses and we're good for the JavaScript. So now that we have active account and active balance inside our component, then we can read this value in our template section here. So let's start by defining a wrapping div because Vue component required that a single parent HTML tag wrap all the rest. So inside first, we can display the address of the active account. So let's create another nested div here. And we use the double curly brace to evaluate JavaScript. So we can directly reference active account. Let's close the div and we're gonna create another div for the balance of this account. So this time we're going to put a string balance and then we evaluate active balance and then we specify that is in way. Okay, let's close the div. 
So we good for the template and the last thing that we need to do is actually I've made a typo in the map getters here. So it's not account, but it's accounts with an S. Okay, so let's save this and we are good for this component. So next we're gonna create another component to read the value of the store data variable inside a smart contract. So let's create a new component called simple storage dot view. And this component is going to have also a template and a script section. So first template and then script. Okay, so let's start with the script section. As before, we need to import the map getters function from view X. And then we're going to export our component object. So let's give a name to our component. Next, we want to configure the result to monitor the store data function in our smart contract. Every time the result of this function call will change, Drizzle will automatically update its internal state. And by connecting this state to our component, that's how we're gonna keep our component up to date. So in order to do this initial configuration of Drizzle, we're gonna use the created hook of the view. The created hook of view is executed just once when the component is first created. So if you have any sort of initialization logic, this is the right place to do it. So inside this function, we're going to dispatch an action to configure Drizzle to watch our function. So we use this, then we use dollar store. So that's our Vuex store. This is automatically attached to your component because we configure the Vuex store in the main.js file of our application all right so back to our component and we're going to call the dispatch method on the store to create an action and so the name of the action is drizzle slash register underscore contract and this will take a few arguments so we need to give the name of the smart contract of the function and the arguments of the function and since we're also going to need these in another part of our code, we're going to put everything in an object called args. And I'm going to define this object just above. So args equal, let's specify the different required arguments. So we need the contract name. So that's going to be simple storage. We need the method name. So that's going to be store data. And we're gonna need the method argument. So in our case, that's an empty string because our store data function doesn't take any argument. All right, so with this created hook in place, then the result will be properly configured to watch our function. And after that, we're gonna import the result of the function call into our smart contract by defining our computed property on our component. And first we need to import a function defined by Drizzle. So let's use the map getters function and this time the namespace is contracts and in this namespace there is a utility function called get contract data and once we have access to this function in our component then we can define another computed property called contract data and this function will simply call the get contract data function that we got from drizzle but with the proper argument so it's going to return this dot get contract data and we need to pass it an object and first there is a contract key so that's going to be args dot contract name and after we need to give it the method name method so that's args dot method all right so let's close everything and now let's go to the template to print the result of the function call so let's define a wrapping paragraph and inside we're gonna have a string that says store data and then we open the double curly braces to access contract data and here we have contract data that will be evaluated using the function here that we just defined and that should be enough to read the value of the stored data in our smart contract. As a quick recap on how you can create a read-only component in Vue and Drizzle, so basically you need to define 
a created hook, you need to register your function call by dispatching this action. And after that, you need to define a computed object. And by using the get contract data function of Drizzle, you can define a computed property that fetches the result of the function call from the Drizzle state. And after in your template, then you're able to use this computed property. All right, so we almost done with this component, but I just spotted a little typo. So after the computed object here, here I need a comma. All right, so let's save this. So now we're actually done with this component. So next we're gonna do our last component. So that's a component to execute the set function of the smart contract, which is a function that can modify the blockchain. So this time we're gonna need a form. So this component will be slightly more complex. So let's create this component and call it simple storage form.view. All right, so as usual, we'll have our template in our script section. And we'll start by importing the map getter function from view x. Then let's export the component object. So we're going to define its name. So simple storage form. OK. Then we're going to define our computed object because we want to access the Drizzle instance inside our component. So here we're going to use the spread operator and the map getters function. And this time the namespace is Drizzle. And the object that we want to grab is Drizzle instance. And we're going to use this to send transaction to the blockchain. Then we're going to define a method that will be triggered when we send the form. So we're going to define another object called method. And our method will be called on submit. And we inside, we're going to reference the drizzle instance that we imported with map getters. And with this function, we're going to reference our smart contract. So simple storage. Then we need to reference the correct method. So method set finally we're going to call cache sense so this is a method of drizzle to send transaction to the blockchain and we need to give the argument that we're going to pass to the set function so we reference a variable that we haven't defined yet but we will define it just after all right so now that we have defined our on submit method then we can define this value variable so for all the temporary state in view components, you can use the data object and you need to give it a function. And in our case, we're going to return an object with a single entry called value. And at the beginning, it's empty. And every time we change our input, it's going to update this value here. OK, so we have finished with our JavaScript. So now it's time to take care of our template. So let's scroll up and we start by defining a form. And this form is going to have a single input. And we're going to use a vmodel directive on the value variable. So that means that every time that we change this input, then this variable in our component will be updated and vice versa. If from the JavaScript we modify this variable, then this input will be updated as well. So that's a two-way binding. That's usually what you want to use in forms. Then the type is a text input, then the placeholder the value okay and after that we're going to define a button to submit the form and we're going to use a special view directive called click dot prevent so that's a shortcut to bind an html element to a function and we're going to bind it to on submit and by the way since we use the click dot prevent directive then we don't need to do e dot prevent default to prevent the form from being submitted this is automatically done by the view framework all right so let's close this and let's put some text and let's close the button all right so let's save this and now we're good so let's recap what we've done so this component job is to call the set function of the smart contract to change the value of the store data variable for that, we define a form with a single text input. This input will receive the new value of the store data variable. When we click on this button, trigger the onSubmit function. This function is defined below. And in this function, we use the Drizzle instance to send our transaction to the smart contract. So we specify the smart contract, 
the function and the value of the argument. And we reference this value, which is a temporary data that we define here in the data key. And that is automatically synced with the input thanks to the vModel directive of view. So that's how it all fits together. All right, so now we're done with this component and with all the other components that we needed to create. So it's time to render this component in the app component. So let's go back to the app component and we'll go to the script section and we'll import the component that we just created. So let's start with the account component. And then we have the simple storage component. And then we have the form to execute the set function. So simple storage form from simple storage form. Okay. And now that we have imported this component, we need to add them to the components key here in the object that we export. So components and here specify them. So again, simple storage simple storage form otherwise if we don't do this it's not possible to use this component in our template so okay so we're good for the script part so now let's go to the template part and here to show the accounts and we just render the account component so account then for simple storage we have two components so simple storage and simple storage form okay so we good all right so now we are done with our app component and we can finally test everything so open another terminal window go to the root of the project and start the truffle develop command it's going to start a local ganache instance and after deploy your smart contract with the migrate dash dash reset command okay and now open another terminal window and this time go to the VAP directory and install the dependency with npmi. All right, so I'm gonna clear my screen and finally I'm gonna start the server for the front end with the npm run serve command. All right, so I have some syntax error. So in the simple storage form, I have this error. Okay, so let's go back to the text editor, simple storage form. All right, so let's get rid of this semicolon here, back to the console and this time the build was successful so let me copy this address localhost 8080 and I'm gonna load this in the browser and then I'm gonna try to change the value of the store data so 10 for example and it works 20 yeah we refactored the VDAP that we did in the last video but this time we use totally custom component in our view application so that shows you that the Drizzle View plugin is really flexible. If you want to use all its convenience that you can use, is ready to use components and is really quick and easy. But if you need some flexibility, you can also create your custom component and display the data coming from the smart contract exactly like you want. In the next video, I will show you how we can handle events in the Drizzle View plugin. Thanks for watching.